first guest this hour was an awesome keynote speaker here at IFA in Berlin and designs and integrates technology that powers millions of intelligent devices, including, of course, computers, game consoles, cloud servers, and help define the new era of surround computing. We'll even find out what that means. Please welcome the Chief Technology Officer and Senior Vice President of AMD, of course, Advanced Micro Devices, Mark Papermaster. Mark, welcome into tomorrow. How are you, sir? I'm great, Dave. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure. First of all, uh, thanks for spending some time with us because you know keynote speakers typically have a lot of work to do and you did a, a prep and a great keynote and got a lot of attention and we thought, we've got to talk to Mark because there's some pretty interesting things going on, not only on the AMD side in general, but what you talked about and the whole world of virtual reality, too, and where we're headed into tomorrow. Well, it's really an exciting time, Dave, and it's been a thrill for me to be here at IFA. Mm -hmm. You can feel the excitement here. You mm -hmm. can feel the changes about, and, and that was the topic of my keynote. So it's, it's a pleasure for me to talk about something I love, which is technology and how it can change our lives. I ah, love it because that's a, we've been covering it for 21 years, and it, and it seems like there's so much new all the time to talk about. You know, we never run out of things to talk about, like you and your team at AMD never run out of things to be involved with to keep this excitement going. The innovation never stops. Oh, that's for sure, and it's a good thing. <laughs> that, it, that it never stops. Uh, let's talk about how virtual reality is so disruptive, really. We talk about disruptive technologies. Uh, VR is certainly in that category. Well, Dave, let me tell you the way I think about it, and I share this with our audience here at IFA. Mm -hmm. I put it in historical context. Think about right here in Berlin at IFA, the radio, the TV, the first cathode ray television was here in 1931. Yes. Yeah. Both obviously disruptive technologies. Why? They brought audio mass communications. And then, of course, audio visual with the advent of TV. And, of course, the name of IFA, which now is just IFA, but initially stood for the International Funkausstellung. I don't know if you know that. It took, yes. me, it took me years to pronounce that. Uh, I was just saying International Farfignugin, something <laughs> or other. Yeah. But Funk is radio. Exactly. Because in 1924, when this show first started with Albert Einstein, one of the first keynote speakers, you're following in awesome footsteps, then, of course, he talked about this new thing called radio. Exactly. So, so that, to your point, that's, there's the tech history. Yeah. So that's the context. So think about that. Radio, television, right here at IFA. And then what happened since then? Think about when computing became personal with the PC. Now it was audiovisual and it was interactive, right? We're sending messages back to one another, you know, emails, social media began okay. on the PC. Okay. And then it shrunk in size and became where it could be in the palm of your hand, your pocket with smartphones mm -hmm. and, you know, a whole application ecosystem and entertainment that, ca that you carry with you. So each of these has been phenomenally disruptive. Virtual reality will be even more disruptive. Why? It is a fundamental change. It involves your emotions uh, like you, you feel so attached to the devices you have today. Can you imagine if you, uh, you left your home uh, without that connectivity of your phone? Oh. That, you know, you'd be lost, yeah, right? Yeah, we used to say, don't leave home without your Amex. You know, there are commercials years ago. Now it's forget, don't leave home without your phone, or, and people don't even use it as a phone anymore, but that's beside the point. That connectivity, you're right, is so critical to our daily lives. I mean, how could we not have it? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what we call, as you said, surround computing, we also call it the immersive era, mm -hmm. think about it as that next transformation is disruptive or more than each of those other examples I gave. Why? Because it changes completely the way that we interface, as those other introductions did, but this one is even more of an emotional connection we have as we interface with technology. So Dave, as you and I are here, imagine if uh, we weren't physically next to one another, but we're actually remote, yeah. and yet we had this same experience. That's the vision. That's the ultimate end goal, is that the blending of what is created and generated, and, and you say, yes, it's artificial, but it can match. Eventually, it's going to match that same sensation we have sitting across from one another right here in the studio. Yeah, and, and that's amazing, too, because that's part of that immersive technology of VR. And people, a lot of, uh, certainly a lot of our listeners even, uh, and we skew, obviously, to those who are more tech-inclined and mm -hmm. interested, but it's general public on, on the radio, uh, still think in terms of, well, virtual reality, that's just for gaming. Oh, no, it's not the case. I mean, gaming, absolutely. And I think that brought it to the attention that it's been getting, but there's so much more than that. Let's talk about some of the industries that you talked about in your keynote where VR is going to be so important. I'd love to, Dave. But I want to talk for a minute, let's talk about gaming and entertainment in VR sure. because 
any type of new disruption, you first need to have an industry that is the early adopter. Mm -hmm. And that's what drives that development of content, right? Again, we talked about the TV, but it wasn't the, te it wasn't the technology alone. It had to be, there was networks and all of the TV the news and the, in the uh, you know, entertainment that came. Mm -hmm. Same here. So gaming, movies and the VR, you know, where you're completely surrounded, audio, visual, the interaction, uh, these will be the first, I'll say, killer applications that drive adoption. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it brings down the cost, it, it opens up the development communities, and then you end up with thousands and thousands of content developers. As soon as that happens, that's the, where the curve of adoption takes off exponentially. And one by one, you will see it disrupt and turn industries on their head so let's, let's just pick a few. Uh, first, let's talk about social media. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's any accent as to why Mark Zuckerberg has spent uh, some sums of money yeah. to acquire Oculus Rift. A lot of sums of money, yeah, good point. But it's a, it's a wonderful technology for, as we say, starting with gaming entertainment, but think about retail. Think about, uh, back to Facebook, social media, yeah. right? Think about, uh, you know, when the next time you uh, are going to the doctor, imagine if you first uh, conducted an, an interview with the, uh, the, the professional nurse or the doctor uh, in, in a virtual reality. And I can go on and on of industries which will be disrupted by that virtual presence that this technology will create. And it's funny because I've always found that the word disruptive technology, that, that word disruptive sounds like it's a bad thing and not so, especially when it's going to help. You, you hit on a key point medically, how that can be so important to make such a big difference in so many people's lives. And imagine the use of VR, virtual reality, with your doctor. I mean, right now it's hard to imagine what would we do? You know, I mean, you've, he's got to touch and feel and, and make sure everything's okay. Not necessarily, and for a lot of things, diagnoses or initial contact with the doctor, you know, allows some prescription to be right. sent perhaps or otherwise. I mean, this is awesome. Think about training. You're hiring new employees and you're training them and you, you bring them through virtual reality. I mean, that's the perfect way uh, to educate people on uh, new approaches and techniques. It's being used today, even the Royal College uh, of Medicine in London's already using virtual reality and, and you know, surgery procedures, et cetera. It's fantastic. Wow. And I guess the initial folks might have said, you want to do what? <laughs> you know, you, you want to have virtual reality? How about real reality and, and you know, for my surgery? Uh, but then things worked and worked well and it became a, a really good opportunity for folks to use it more and in more fields. I like how you talked about that curve and, and the whole idea of now developers spending a lot of time and money and effort, especially for gaming, say, yes, this will absolutely work in many things other than just gaming. Yes. So take advantage of it. Exactly. And that's where AMD kind of plays a role, I'm guessing, with some great processors and the ability to say, there's a lot of data here now, we can handle it. Yeah, actually, virtual reality, it, the early experiences were not good because you would uh, actually feel almost motion sickness yeah. because the technology wasn't there. And so a big box on your head, and that wasn't fun either. Exactly, <laughs> so what we focus on at AMD is providing that graphics, that visualization horsepower, and the compute horsepower behind it to mm -hmm. give you a wonderful experience, to have it be seamless, where you don't even know uh, that that uh, that you you have the trappings of technology to create that experience. Now, are there additional technological improvements that you at AMD are seeing that we need in order to start to accomplish more and more of these things? Uh, we're not there yet, but slightly into tomorrow. We are. I tell you, it's just around the corner. So already today, there's excellent enablement. So if you look at, uh, we just launched a new graphics card, mm. RX 480, Radeon RX 480 drop the price tremendously, tremendously uh, sub $200 to start off in having a virtual reality experience. Mm. Uh, but beyond that, what you're going to see is continuous improvement in both uh, CPU, we have a new CPU uh, that we're, that we're uh, announcing that, that we're shipping in just a matter of months, along with that graphics, and imagine when the headsets that you wear start to shrink in size. So they're, they're actually, uh, these initial ones, not too bad, yeah. uh, but you'll see them uh, come down in size. I've seen in China, uh, th they're almost like uh, bigger sunglasses even, that were just prototypes, but we're getting there. We are absolutely yeah. getting there, you're For exactly sure. right. Love it, well I can see uh, how you were asked to be a keynote speaker here at IFA because you have a passion for this and that's awesome. And we want to continue to follow up with you into tomorrow. Make sure maybe we can catch up with you at CES and uh, either way, got to get you back on the show and, and an update of what AMD is doing and what you and your team are working on with virtual reality. We'd love it. 
Thank you, Dave. I'd love to come back and visit again and give you that update. Dynamite, my pleasure. AMD.com, one of the easiest websites in these two weeks of broadcast you could possibly ask for. So visit AMD.com. We'll get you there, too, when you hit us up at intotomorrow.com. I'm Dave Graveline. More from IFA in Berlin, Germany, on the Advanced Media Network.